Morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog. We have had a meeting with the accountant this morning. It's been pretty good news actually. Uh, we actually made a profit in the first year of uh, the brew shed, which very few businesses do apparently, and that's on top of actually building the brewery. Can you believe it? So uh, yeah, perked me up a little bit. So what we're going to have to do now is uh, wait for Stuart to come back with the Argon tank. You will notice it is missing from the corner where it normally resides. That one there is Argo Shield, a mixture of Argon and CO2 for MIG welding, not for TIG welding. But whilst we are waiting for Stu to come back from the gas man, then uh, I can use that time to go up to Screwfix and pick up some of the fittings. Here's a cheeky peek of the control panel that we're going to be building for the uh, for the brew stand, but there are some components that I've had to order for the control panel and for the brew stand, namely the wheels uh, that I have to go up to Screwfix and collect now. And then, with any luck, we might get some framework built today and uh, actually be installing those wheels. We'll see. It is uh, approaching 11 o'clock, so it's touch and go as to whether I'm going to get that far today. But we'll see. Anyway, stick around for the build. I'll be back right after this uh, brief interlude. We're back from Screwfix. Look at that. We've got that to check fake, for fake 20 pound notes in the pub. Now the old one broke, so new insector cuter. A few MCBs for the uh, distribution board, some panel outlets for the control panel that we're building, and then uh, of course the piece de resistance, which is these beautiful chemical resistant wheels for the bottom of the brew stand. Check out them beauties. Anyway, that's enough procrastinating. Let's get over into the workshop and cut some steel. So we've got somewhere to mount these beautiful SS Brutech parts. So there she is folks. The swingable cradle for, this is for the boil kettle. But now what we need to do is we need to build uh, the brackets that are gonna hold this bad boy square on the brew stand and that is these triangular brackets down the side here you can see they come down quite a nice thick piece of steel looking at this section you can really see how solid that upright is and then it runs along the bottom to meet in the corner to make a nice triangle to brace these pots so we're going to go ahead now and cut that out of the steel that we've got available which is this 75 mil stuff over here that stuff there so I'm gonna go measure up get cutting and we'll come back when we're gonna do a dry fit before we do a weld so I've done some slicing and a dicing and it makes it look like I've made a load of speed squares but these are actually the uprights so if you imagine they stood vertically, you'll see it soon enough folks, but there we go. That is three uprights, which are going to form these sections on the brew stand. I think they actually look quite substantial. Probably overkill with the 75 millimeter steel, but hey ho, let's, uh, let's get these tacked up. Oh, I can't kind of tell Stuart back. Okay, chance. Gotta wait for Stuart to come back, haven't we, buddy? Let's get some pot noodle inside us. They actually welded up really, really nicely. Once these welds are cleaned off, they will look spot on. But I think what I'll do is clean the whole of the brew stand down when it's completed. But you can see how they are gonna hold up those cradles off the ground or off the stand should I say so uh, what we need to do now is fabricate I might leave that till 
when we've got the uh, the plungers actually but I do need to fabricate a side thing here for the plunger to stick into but I suppose I'm gonna wait until we get those uh, what do they call them the latches you know what I mean guys these toggle clamps if you like so I'll wait until we get these because they're gonna plunge through the side into that rotating half moon shaped plate but so far so good the third one's on the table this one warped a little bit as you can see it's just picked up on the end that's the trouble with welded stainless steel I think there was already a little bit of a bow in that bit and of course it's just put that tension in the rest of the uh, the rest of the piece so all I'll do is put it in the clamp and try and wrestle it as straight as possible before I go ahead and weld it onto the stand itself shouldn't be a problem once I've got it on there so the next job now is to start cutting steel for the stand itself so we really need to figure out how wide the whole stand is going to have to be so I can cut the front and the back pieces accordingly and then uh, then we'll start cutting these central sections looks like we've got four, five, six, seven maybe on the top looking at that because it looks like the HLT is sat on two or three of its own separate little stands we shall see, I'll see if we can design it any differently obviously we're using this as a bit of a cheat sheet but we're not going to make a carbon copy because well you can't see all the detail on this sheet for one so I'm going to measure up I'm going to start cutting some stock I think I've got 40 millimeter or 30 millimeter actually square tube so we'll go and get some of that off the side and cut that I also bought this uh, I think that's 60 mil square tubing thinking that maybe I could do the front section with that but I'm not sure yet so we'll cut the back and some of the cross section pieces and we'll see how it goes from there as to whether I'm going to use that that larger piece or not I don't know yet right folks we've started cutting the steel box section I've decided to go with this 50 mil for the top front and then the 30 mil square box for all the rest so in order for everybody to be able to follow along the brew stand is going to be 600 tall it's going to be 700 deep and it's going to be 1850 wide so therefore we need to deduct all of the said bar stock sizes to give us the size of the upright so I've gone ahead and I've cut these long pieces here at 1850 and then what we'll do is we'll cut in the sections for the mounts for the kettles so that will give us one, two, three we'll mount the boil kettle and the mash tun and then where the HLT sits I was thinking about just doing a couple of separate two or three depending on how much steel we've got left separate um, bars for it to sit on then we've got the end so we'll cut those last when we know what we've got but before that we'll go ahead and cut one two three four and then of course down at the bottom here we're going to need five six maybe seven maybe eight if that makes sense because that is going to be almost an identical copy of the top section apart from the HLT seat just there so one two three four so we need eight pieces at 700 ah no we don't we're going to need four four pieces at 700 minus the back stock which is 30 minus the front stock which is 50 and that will give us uh, 620 and then we need 4 at 700 
minus the back stock which is 30 then minus the front stock which is 30 on the bottom which will give us 640 so we've got a cutting list for those sections there we'll call these A we'll call these B and we've already got what we'll call C these long runners uh, for at 1800 and that's just straight up of which three are 30 by 30 and one at 50 by 50. I hope you're following along I hope that makes sense it certainly does to me and then we're going to need these uprights which uh, the total height of this is 600 so we're going to need one two three four at 600 minus of course the casters which are these bad boys and the height on these casters is 150 millimeters from the basal platen to the top of the spinnimajig so we're minus one 150 and then we're going to minus this is where I'm going to go wrong again look it's not 4 it's 2 I'm glad I'm doing this so minus 150 minus let's do the front ones 50 minus 30 and then 2 at 600 minus 150 minus 30 minus 30 so simple enough my mental arithmetic's not great today. Minus 150 minus 50 minus 30 equals, there we go. So that one is 370 and this is 390. So there we go. That's our cutting list. Let's go ahead and chop the stock. So after a considerable amount of grinding later, or slicing if you like we have our stock ready for assembly so I'm not gonna film the whole process because there's hundreds of videos on the YouTube of people tacking steel together and I don't think that's what you've come for is it well we'll see but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this somewhat resembling a brew stand within the next couple of hours and then uh, once I'm happy with it tacked we'll go ahead and we'll weld the whole thing up but it's looking good already all that steel compacted into that wonderful little pile anyway let's go ahead and uh, get busy with the ticky I'm not doing too bad folks as you can see the frame is taking shape I've got most of the corners in just this one needs moving to the edge and welding in place and then the center sections which of course go across here and here you know what I mean uh, I'll put the pots like almost in situ before I weld them on to make sure I get the distances right for the cradles but I'm really pleased it's going really well the welds are looking nice and tight and smart and uh, everything, you know, is pretty much, pretty much square. That's just hitting the weld at the bottom there. Look, that's why you can see a little bit of light. But uh, there we go. How's that? It's looking pretty good, eh? So, yes, things are going to plan, folks. And this is what the end looks like, where we've got that extra big box section. I wanted that bigger piece on this end you see so it's got a little bit more uh, durability if we're operating around the front and we're leaning on it and all that kind of other jazz so that's all I was concerned about there and it makes it look a little bit more chunky I think gives it an extra dimension a little bit more progress we have the frame all together apart from just a few uprights here and we have the first basket support in position and as you can see she operates 
like a little beauty once that's got the tank in there that's not going to be a problem I did give us loads of space here because I was worried about you know any hoses or ball valves as we tilt it and rotate and of course all of the elements I'm worried about them catching and hitting stuff so I've made sure that we've got plenty of room on the boil kettle to avoid any of that but I think it looks pretty sharp that's going to be spot on when it's finished so all I need to do now is uh, it is getting late look it's seven o'clock and I'm off over to Tom's tomorrow I've not put together a toolkit yet but I'd like to get at least the next cross beam in place so I can mount both the pots in there and have a nice look at a dry fit before we move on to the next stage so a couple more tacks and another piece of steel and I think we should be there you're ready for home aren't you buddy Chancy boy <laughs> buddy you want to go home yes you do I'll not be long mate So the stand is gone, no it's not completed, but I'm telling you folks, I have worked my absolute groin off, quarter past eight, and we managed to get to this stage, excuse the cooling system in the background making noise, but check that out, that kind of looks freaking awesome chance doesn't it mate, he wants to go home, he's so fed up, but there we go. I've literally just screwed the wheels on, those sections aren't fully welded up properly yet and there's more bars to go on. I just wanted to kind of get it all mocked up so at least today we can have a look how it actually turned out on the video and then because I'm at Tom's tomorrow we're going to probably have a break from the build video and we'll do a video over at Tom's place or at least what I can and then we'll come back and pick this up afterwards but there it is folks beautiful I had to chop the points of these apex sections off these mounts but if you look at the clearance that we've got on the on the taps I think we're just about right once if that had a hose tail on it I think we're just about past there so of course they're not going to be tilted forwards the kettle will tilt forwards just slightly to minimize dead space but the majority of the tilting will happen backwards and that of course is just going to happen happen like this so we can rinse the whole bucket out into the whole tank should i say the kettle out into a bucket or waste and the same should be capable with the mash tun. Look at that. Oh, and it even it's well balanced as well. Now that is pure coincidence. But I mean, would you just look at her, folks? A double tip brew stand for the pilot kit here at Harrison's Brewery. I'm super, super stoked I got this far today. Absolutely brilliant. Of course, like I say, it has cost me many, many hours today. We had the accountant. I also had an interruption by Craig. Quick pint with him. Can't say no to a mate. And then we managed to come down and finish this off. So I put together my toolkit for my run out to Chesterfield tomorrow. I'm not going to take my drill because I believe Tom's got one. If he hasn't, we're screwed. I better message him before I go, actually. He's got one, I'm sure I've seen it on the vlog. So I'm gonna take this toolkit, I'm gonna to get packed up, I'm gonna go home, and we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog. And if you're just here for the SS Brutech build, then the next video, there will be a link in the description shortly, or at least on the channel. Thanks for watching, see you later, cheers.